So this is Judy's new exhibit. Tell us about it. Well, this is the largest piece to date. It certainly is. And um, it's basically a pattern. Yeah. And it's the first time I incorporated text um, using the ideas that I've always worked with with my sculpture and my drawing, which as you can see from the shells on the floor, collections of forms um, have always interested me. Ideas of groupings and congregation and um, it kind of has been a theme in my work for years. Um, some of these sculptures I've all thought of as members of a tribe and the drawings that I do um, are also tribal in a sense. So the idea of um, forms that make a giant population makes me think an awful lot about people and animals and forms in nature which kind of like harness power collectively. When did you start the canvas? The canvas piece, I was invited to participate in a faculty show at the Art Institute and the fashion department there is really terrific. I, I teach in that department and the assistant um, to the chair is a really creative woman. So the whole hanging implementation and the requirement that I do something on a large piece of muslin, this is 20 feet, was a parameter that was given to me. And I had no idea how I was going to approach the project, but I knew that I was given a large piece of muslin and I had to fill the whole thing. What is it called, muslin? Not. It's a thin canvas. So this is, a, it's like a canvas, but you know, given that it was a, an exhibit put on by the fashion department, you know, um, they work with fabric there. So the assistant to the chair, her name is Vicki Nolman, you know, kind of like nonchalantly asked me if I wanted to participate in the show and she gave me this giant canvas piece to work on and I said sure, not knowing it was 20 feet. Oh my God. So I came home and I unrolled it and I thought, okay, I'll do something like these drawings that I've been working on. I'll do something like that on this, for this project. And then I asked her, thinking I could cut it, you know, well, can I cut it and make it smaller? And she said, no. I said, okay. So I took the forms of the drawings that I've worked on and also these kind of like reaching arc forms um, show up in my sculpture a lot. So there's a certain kind of like familiarity with the gesture of these kind of like prayer opening vagina-like shapes that probably show up um, in my work for a long time. And a lot of it also gets inspired by um, the origin of forms, looking at shells and rates of growth. And if you really look at you know, how a shell originates, there's this kind of like succession of arcs that come from like the nose. Mm -hmm. And this particular aspect of the shell, I think um, feeds into a lot of my artwork, you know, the rate of growth. Right. So there's a lot of that in the radiating out and the pulsing out. Yeah. And so I took this kind of like preliminary drawing, which I engineered on tracing paper and I just kept flipping it and repeating it and building it out and you know I have some experience in textiles and I was a textile artist for a long time so I I understand pattern and what I did was I engineered a giant system where you know this motif can repeat is it the same? Across. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're right. It is. Parts of it are. So to make a pattern, you have like a form that repeats, uh -huh. and then you fill in the space in between. Um, and then I, you know, it was just such an ambitious project. A lot Tumble. of drawing, a lot of transfer, and then I really wanted to incorporate text. So it's right. the first time um, I did that, and I found the definition of tribe and I found the definition of pattern um, and one of my, st actually a student at school, it wasn't even my student, it was a student who I observed was transferring some text. I happened to be in a meeting and we were leaving this classroom and this 
um, design student was doing a text transfer with marker and I, I said, what are you doing and how are you doing that? Because I knew I didn't want to write it by hand. Um, and she told me how to do it, printing out text and using a blender marker and getting it backwards and this kind of like method of transfer. And so, you know, I designed like how big the text would be and I think what's um, kind of interesting for me and some friends have told me also is what's the relationship between these words? You know, how is a pattern and a tribe, how are they similar in the sense that they're both about um, groupings and there's also this idea of um, what qualities the species have in common to make them considered part of a tribe. What made you come up with the connection between those two words, pattern? I mean, there is an obvious connection, but it's only obvious after you put those two words together. What um, made you combine or think of relating those two words? Well, I guess I feel that my work is tribal, not just in the sense that the word is an adjective, but I have thought for a long time of what is a tribe? What is a congregation? What is it, you know, um, when you say, okay, people with like beliefs are Christian or they're Muslim or, you know, what makes a species be a species? And then where does that end? So where is the fluidity between you know what makes the grouping uh, have that defined identity? And I think that you know that that leaves room for a lot of discussion. Beautiful, I love it. So when is this piece going to be exhibited? Um, it will be exhibited hopefully in mid July at a hair salon called Exhibit. <laughs> believe it or not. Um, and I really have to credit, like I said, the woman who organized the faculty show because that woman put the holes and the grommets in the canvas and hung all of the pieces with this zigzag fabric thread from the top. And when I, when I saw the piece hung, because this piece was installed in an exhibit, um, it was phenomenal because of the way she also visualized hanging it. And I also have to credit David um, for suggesting that I add the beads. You know, he said, well, gee, you add beads to your sculpture. You know, it's, it's got a certain rawness to it because the drawing is, you know, I'm really trying to balance line and color and um, it's still a drawing to me, but there's still a kind of level of adornment. So I sewed the beads as accent kind of like selectively through the piece. So there's, you know, the woman who, asked me to be in the show. There was my idea. There was David who suggested I add the beads. There's this great girl named Alice Shields who's opening her new salon who asked me to be I don't know, an exhibiting artist this summer. So there's, again, this force of several people who are left who are getting this project to happen. It also looks a little bit like a sale. Not only the material of a very old, traditional sale, but the way you have the fabric hung and mounted. There's a certain nautical quality yeah. there as well. Maybe the, yeah. the raw blankness of the canvas and the grommets, the holes, the tension of the, the suspension. Beautiful. Thanks for taping it. Thank you.